Yo. Yo. Uh, so I'm wearing my crew jacket. Yeah. From Godzilla '97. Right. Which you. Which I clearly worked de on. Definitely worked on. Yeah. No, this is my uh, this is my favorite thrift store find, and the reason I'm wearing it today is because we're talking about Fall Guy. Yes, we are. And Fall Guy is a movie about well, about a stuntman. It is. And so it's a it's a Hollywood movie about Hollywood. Yeah. So this is like a Hollywood insider kind of jacket. Yeah. So you got to do it. Uh, and uh, it was, I, I was like, this is my only opportunity to shine with this. Right. I will be drenched in sweat by the end of yeah. this chat. But it's because it's such a high octane film. Yeah. That like, you okay. know, my pulse is just throbbing the entire time. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny. You know, I, I think from the time we saw the first trailer for it, yeah. I was like, I, I'm not a fan of the trailer. I don't know if the movie is going to be good, but I still feel like you and I are going to enjoy it. Yeah. Yeah. And we did. And we did. Yeah, I mean, it's funny. So I didn't realize until we, like, right before we saw that David Leach, who um, did the uh, Bullet Train, directed mm. the movie. But, you know, I just kind of, we just wanted to go because we like Ryan Gosling, we like Emily Blunt. I mean, it's funny. They, it's uh, the Barbenheimer, all in one. Yeah, it really is. Uh, but, you know, it just looks like a fun movie. And, um, yeah, I think, like, we are, like, big fans of, like, Ryan Gosling comedy actor. Absolutely. You know, I think, like, uh, Wise Guy was the first time I was really impressed with him as a comedian. And then, of course, like, um, the uh, that one SNL skit that, that he, I mean, many SNL skits yeah. that he's done. But the, uh, the well, Papyrus, Papyrus is still one of my favorite skits of all time and our sketches of all time. And so uh, I'm a big fan, but... But yeah, let's talk about the movie. I mean, this is all uh, actually, I think, uh, a conversations people might listen to because well, I the movie know. didn't do great. Yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't know that people like. I think the trailers didn't didn't do a right, the right job of, of yeah. trying of showing what this movie was. I think they almost focused a little too much on the on the like love story, on the yeah. romantic comedy aspect, and that is an aspect of it. But but I think the 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 sort of comedy action of it and the trying to figure out like what happened to the star of the movie yeah is is actually a bigger part of it it really is it's funny it's a very like it's a hollywood mystery yeah yeah with with like a with a love story the love story is basically the b story of the movie yeah yeah uh, and which, it's, it's which a, i was definitely surprised by it's a it's a fun thread that yeah. that you know that really helps to hold things together and, yeah. and bring things sort of back to a to a like an emotional core but yeah. but it's not it's not the the main thing of the movie, and it's and not really romantic comedy, is it? That, no, that's what I was expecting it to be. It's an action an action mystery with with uh, romantic comedy elements. Yeah. Um, well, it's basically it's about a stunt man who uh, was um, in love with this girl, and then he gets in an accident, and he sort of like runs away from life, and then he gets called up to be the stunt man on her directorial debut mm -hmm. uh and then he you know gets to australia or whatever they were and she it was all the producers machinations she had no idea that he was going to be there and then they kind of like you know there's a conflict there between them and there's a lot of humor but then the story they kind of focused on in the trail a little bit more was then the main star goes missing and he has to go find him right using his stunt man skills of you know knowing the guy and finding the guy um, and, and that's, that's basically the plot of the movie. Yeah, it's funny because we didn't find out until we read the trivia after that there was actually a TV, TV show, show back in like, I don't know, the 70s or 80s yeah. or whatever with, uh, with Lee Majors. Um, well, it was funny because there's a post-credit sequence. Mm -hmm. If you go see the movie, there's a post-credit sequence, you know, they'll do, they, they have the credits and they have like a little bit of like a fun Jackie Chan stunt B-roll thing. Yeah. But then there's an actual after credit scene. Significant after credit scene. Uh, and I was like, and I saw, and I wasn't sure who the old guy was, but I figured it was Lee Majors. Yeah. Yeah, well, it, was, it like, was an older, older man and woman, and yeah. and yeah, and, and you were like, wait, is that Lee Majors? I, I just, I don't know why, I just knew it was Lee Majors. Yeah, well, and it was really funny because afterwards, you know, I looked up and and it turned out it was Lee Majors and his co-star yeah. from the TV show The Fall Guy. Well, it was funny because I knew about, I think there's like a movie called The Stuntman, which I thought was Lee Majors, but maybe not, maybe I don't know. somebody else. But I didn't know Fall Guy was was yeah. It. So so uh, you know, according to IMDb, the the TV show The Fall Guy was about a Hollywood stuntman yeah. who, when when work is uh, when work is is uh, slow, he goes out and does bounty hunting. <laughs> Before um, Dog the Bounty Hunter, right. there was the Fall Guy. Yeah, and so so like it was obviously sort of loosely based on on that concept. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that was that was kind of fun to to have him and his co-star from that uh, the. Uh, well, you know what's really weird? You know, like, the idea of the multiverse? It's almost as if his character in Fall Guy and Drive 
could be different versions of the same character in the multiverse. Yeah. Because the character in Drive was a stuntman. A stuntman, yeah. Yeah, he was just like... He was the mis- driving stuntman. He stunt was man. the sad, stoic yeah. stuntman in a very hardcore crime film. And this, he was like the funny, cute stuntman. Yeah, no, I, I mean, listen, I really liked the movie a lot. Yeah. I thought it was very... I thought it was really funny. I thought it was really cute. Uh, there were twists and turns I wasn't expecting. There were some really funny, like, running moments. I, the Hollywood stuff, I'm like give or take on, which I think we'll chat a little more on, like, movies or shows made about Hollywood. Yeah. Because they can get really, like, incestuous with the humor, I think, sometimes. It's a little, like, bit too up, you know, your own whatever. But I feel like, uh, but I feel like there is, like, a fun, there's a lot of fun to be had there. Yeah, well, I, I feel like this one, actually, you know, they, they did focus on more of the stunt team and yeah. stuff like that. They, they had mentions of other parts of the production crew and stuff, and, and a little bit of inside, you know, uh, like inside Hollywood kind of stuff, but but overall they they actually kept it more on on the sort of like base that like that your general audience can understand. I think so. Yeah. That being said, you know it's funny because we went to a pretty late show, but we went with a very Hollywood audience. Oh yeah. And, yeah. and while we Perks were watching, of being in Los Angeles, right? Well, it was a funny thing because um, you could tell that in our audience there were like different sections of the audience had like different groups of people that were from like different crew areas and so so when certain little mentions would be made of of you know of like this area of stunts or this area of like production or this you know all of a sudden i hear like laughter or like little like tittering from from different sections of our audience and i was like oh yeah this is this is the thing about seeing this kind of movie in in la and it was like you're like that's that was the catering department it was funny right services exactly (laughs) well but it was so funny because it's like you know it was an imax theater late at night you know and granted it was opening weekend but i was like this is you know this is the perfect thing for for LA area. I wonder what the theaters are like outside of this area. Yeah, I think outside of it, it all kind of just it just kind of like whatever, right? Yeah. Like I think that like um, you know, I'm trying to think of any movie about Hollywood that is particularly done well. I feel like every movie about Hollywood is is in itself almost a cult movie. Yeah. Like the like the player, for instance, is like the most famous like movie about movies movie about hollywood and i i don't know anyone outside of older people that that were like already adults when it came out or film students who have seen the player yeah it's just not one of those movies that people watch but it's almost one of those movies that like if somebody who likes that movie would be like you've never seen the player how have you you know that at this point i think that's only reserved for like the godfather Mm -hmm. and like blade runner yeah and to a lesser extent frankly like citizen kane and casablanca i don't think i've ever seen the player yeah you have i have you have yeah i've seen the player but that's how memorable it is well it's one of those movies that it's like you have to be into the you know it's funny i think some movies like movies about like certain um microcosmic things are really interesting like i think that you understand wall street without really understanding the market Mm -hmm. but like you know i don't know if you would like moneyball without understanding baseball and statistics right do you know what i mean because like wall street is about an underdog and it's about greed and it's about losing yourself like like it's about greater things that if you don't understand the market it's irrelevant well, so so here i i think the funny thing is that you know in in movies yeah. you know a lot of the times they'll they'll take a certain industry that that a movie is about and they'll they'll sort of like break it down to it's like most you know the most movie interesting parts yeah but when you're making a movie about making movies, because so many of the people making the movie know too much about making movies, yeah. you end up getting way too detailed, like way too much into the actual game of making movies and too many inside jokes, too many things that like people that are looking at it from the outside wouldn't understand. But everyone that's ever you know giving you your notes or looking at it is looking at it from the perspective of people that know. And yeah. so, so, you know, I think that a lot of the time that that's why those movies don't do well with a general audience because, yeah. cause you never, you don't really have a general audience, you know, telling you, I don't understand this aspect of it. Well, I think also like, I think that's true, but I, I think ultimately it's sort of like, um, you know, I think sometimes a thing does something so well and so definitive that like, it's almost pointless trying again. I think Tropic Thunder kind of like 
sealed the deal on comedies made about make about making movies. Yeah. I mean, like you, you'll never be more excessive or funny or hardcore than Tropic Thunder. So it's like it's kind of hard, right. I think, because honestly, I think that the I think. I think when people look at it's kind of like look at the award shows, right? The 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 only hosts that people like are the ones that tear the room apart. Right. Like Ricky Gervais, if all the if if all the actors could could vote, they would never have Ricky Gervais host cuz he is a murderer. <laughs> but like but they don't get a to choose. Murderer. They don't get to choose, yeah. and so and, and they know like everyone's gonna watch Ricky Gervais kill all of these prominent people because there's a little bit of like um, sh- Schadenfreude. There's a little bit of like karma that we as an audience feel like you know we put these people on a pedestal, so they sort of deserve this like this this ribbing. You know, it's a roast. Yeah, well, it's and, like like be able to to make fun of yourself because like because you're you're out there in the in the public eye like putting on a show yeah like that's you know so you should be able to take somebody you know putting on a show about you and i also think like actors and uh certain actors and over the years too have like become so well actually i mean even before we were born i mean like jane fonda with the whole like vietnam war like a lot of actors like take on giant issues Mm -hmm. and i feel like there's also like that you know go back to your normal job type thing that so i think i think uh, i'm just trying to say society has a general has a lot of general feelings about the industry in general so i think like that's always a challenge when you're making a movie about the industry and that's why i'm saying like tropic thunder perfected it because it's clowning on the industry so hard where like anything other than clowning on the industry is almost a tough sell yeah like, like, and that's why, that's like, for instance, like, you can do it on a TV show. Like, the, the best version of this, other than Tropic Thunder, I, I think I've seen that I can remember at least, is um, uh, Supernatural. Yeah. Remember the one episode of Supernatural where they became them? They that, became, yeah. like, Jensen and Jared and, and Misha, yeah. and, Misha or, or, and they were, like, No, making... wait, Misha was actually there as actual Misha, not, yeah. not Castiel as Misha. Yeah. But, it, but it worked because it was earned and because, like, we and we, the audience, knew enough about those guys yeah. as actors. And, and so there was a playfulness that they didn't have to burn Hollywood to the ground to do. Yeah. Uh, and also we know that, like, especially Dean is so hardcore that, like, the, all this stuff is going to be ridiculous to him. And and that's why it works, because there is, a, like, a making fun of it. And, and I almost feel like Fall Guy, like, they actually don't make fun of Hollywood a they, lot. They don't, no. I, I think, you know, it, it's funny because there there's a little bit that they do in the in the beginning with uh, with David Leach and, and uh, Ryan Gosling. Yeah. Where they, you know, they start off with a, like, you know, don't, please don't, don't text, text, you know, yeah. or, or at least hide your phone while you're, yeah. while you're texting. Um. And, but they're also talking about how it's this is sort of a love letter to to stuntmen and stuff. Yeah. And because David Leach was a was a stuntman before yeah. he was a director. Um, and and I really do feel like in a lot of ways, you know, this this is you know, I think people that have that know nothing about the world of stunts, you actually learn a lot more about that world than you than you would in any other you know anywhere else. I think so too. Um, and yeah, and like just the little things they have in it, it's like, oh, you know, are there are there Oscars for stunts? No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's a funny thing because, like, you know, when we used to do a radio yeah, show, we yeah. would talk about that a lot. Yeah. You know, it's that a, was a thing for a few years. Yeah. Um. But but there's there's so much about the stunt world that people don't really think about and don't don't know. And I think you you get a little like insight into that in a like a fun, cool way. Yeah. Um, but again, I think I think one of the places where the movie succeeds is that. It, it there is definitely a lot of Hollywood insider kind of things. You know, a but bit. but. But not, but that's not the focus of it. Yeah, and and so you know when it pops up, it's fun. It's and it's almost like more informative for yeah. for people that aren't in the industry. Like you get that little peek behind the scenes. I um, guess. But but again, but I think the main thing is that this is the story really does follow trying to figure out what what the deal is with yeah. the, with the star of the movie. And well, I I think that's the thing. I, I think honestly, like for me personally, like this movie is is actually not what I expected at no. all. It's really, I mean, going along with what you said, it is basically like um, like a fish-out-of-water detective story. Mm-hmm. Like, he's essentially, imagine a detective who's not a detective having to... Well, you know, it's funny. In a way, it's actually like... 
there's elements of the Big Lebowski, even yeah. though it's it's not really the Big no, Lebowski I, I know at what all. You mean, though. But there's this idea of this kind of hapless guy thrown into this mystery, and we like him uh, because he's funny and he's a good guy, but he's in over his head, and there's some other like kind of like funny characters around him to help propel the narrative. It's much more action heavy, obviously, because yeah. that's the thing. Like, I mean, for instance, you know, with the friends, like uh, Winston Duke. Oh my God, uh, he was plays... so good. Yeah, I mean, of course, M'Baku from Black Panther and in and, and uh, the father and us, he's awesome in the yeah. movie. He's so funny. Yeah, he, he plays his stunt coordinator in yeah. in the movie and, and like also like one of his you He's know, like best friends, friends yeah. basically. Yeah. But like, he he really every scene that he's in he he stood out to me. I mean he did his Mbaku too. Yeah. He's just he's really he's just so so good. He's but. so good, and he also like there's something about their relationship where the two of them are a little older, um, mm -hmm. and also they're they're fans of movies, so they're always quoting movies together. And I like this is like what me and my friends growing up would always do that I feel is kind of lost now. I don't feel... I feel like people, like, regurgitate memes now to one another, but yeah. not necessarily quote movies. Well, the, the other thing that I really liked about their relationship is that in so many things like that, you end up with a, like... I'm the star, this is my sidekick yeah, kind yeah, of thing. And yeah. it, it didn't feel like that at no, all. Like it, no. it, it just felt like like they were buddies, like, you know, and, and they were they were trying to like work on this thing together and yeah. like, you know, they were just they were helping each other out. Like yeah. it didn't there was no sidekick feeling at all. Well, because Ryan Gosling is only a hero by default in yep, this movie. Absolutely. Like, like he's not he's it's completely and that's what I kinda like about the movie. I mean, it's funny because, you know, if I had not known it, it, sorry if i had seen this movie and later found out that the director bull train made it i would have been like well that makes a lot of sense because like one um bullet train is like it in the fact that like you know brad pitt we were talking about this before the show brad pitt is interesting in bullet train because he's not like a john wick badass killer he's just kind of like He's just kind of a courier. He's just yeah. kind of a random, like, also Big Lebowski-esque character right. who's more funny and smart than actually, like, action guy. And everyone around him is, like, a crazy, like, anime action villain. Um, and so it's like, there's that element. And also Aaron Taylor Johnson yes. is great in both movies. I mean, I he was really good in this movie. Yes. I, I like him. You know, Aaron Taylor Johnson is one of these funny actors that, like, he's either... He's either got a character actor role that he's phenomenal in, or he has the lead where he's the most boring guy in the world. And we can't get these two to match yet. Yeah. Like in Godzilla, he might as well be like, you know, paint drying. Um, you know, and but you get something like this movie or Bullet Train or um uh what was the one with Jake Gyllenhaal where he played the villain? Uh, uh I can't remember not not uh Nocturnal Creature? Is that what it was called? Uh, it doesn't matter. Anyway, he's a great... He can be a great character actor because, you know, in, in to a lesser extent, obviously kick-ass when he was younger. But um, anyway, he's really great. He's really great in the movie. Emily Blunt's, of course, always good. Yeah. Uh, I, I will say my only critique of the movie, and it's not really a critique, it's just the way they decided to make the movie, is I thought it was going to be a little more of a romantic comedy that's centered on the will they, won't they between the two characters. Right. And I felt like, you know, as we mentioned before, that was sort of the B side. And it was really more Ryan Gosling sort of in this character arc of getting his mojo back and mm -hmm. discovering, uh, you know, what the mystery is while also getting the girl. Yeah. As opposed to like, because like a romantic comedy, for instance... I would say 80% of the movie, the two characters are together yeah. in the scene. Or or at least, like, you know, if it's it's one or, or the other within, like, equal amounts. Usually the girl character a little more because she's usually the main character. This was, like, I would say, like, 70% Gosling the entire movie. Yeah, yeah. Well, again, it, I just, I don't think it's a romantic comedy. It's not. It's not. Yeah. And, and I, I think, again, the, the marketing sort of towards that, I think they've done a better job at the premieres at, at like, showing what this movie is because they've yeah. been focusing on it's, the stunts and things like that really and how is, fun it is. But It's really an action movie, yeah. That being said, you yeah. know, when, when Ryan Gosling and, and Emily Blunt are together, like, it's it's adorable chemistry. They, yeah. like, they, you know, they're really fun together. You yeah. know, I, I enjoyed enjoyed watching them, but, but yeah, it's, it, 
it, that's such a secondary part. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. it's yeah. like Argyle is like more of a romantic comedy. Yeah. Like Argyle, they spend like Sam Rockwell and um, uh, Bryce Dallas Howard spend like quite a bit of the movie together. Yeah, like and 90% of like, it. Like, yeah. Um, and, um, oh, and just like Argyle has the cat, this movie has an awesome dog. A dog that takes French commands. Absolutely. You know, but the funny thing is, like, I like this movie. I also think this movie's gonna do really well on VOD and streaming. Yeah. I just think it's like, it's like one of those movies, you know what I mean? That, like, you might not go see it on the biggest screen possible, but I, I'll be honest, like, Gosling's amazing. Yeah. He's super funny. Like, it's really cute. Uh, he and Blunt are amazing. Uh, it's the action's cool. I mean, it's just well, a good time. The, the other fun thing is that because so much of it focuses on stunts, so there's like the mixture of stunts that are going on while they're making the movie, yeah, and also the the um, the actual you know the stunts of the of the overarching actual movie that yeah. you're watching, yeah. Um, and and it makes it really fun. So there, there's a lot of really big big action pieces, and you know some are uh, are unnecessary explosions, but purposely for the point of look, this is this is for this big sci-fi epic movie that we're making within the movie. Yes. You know, and then other ones are big big explosive things that you know that you're like <laughs> big explosive thing in a in an action movie. You know? I kind of lost track of that, but it sounded it sounded well, like. Well, the, the point is that there is a lot of big explosive action. Yeah, yeah. Um, and some of it is for the humor value yeah. of this is the movie within the movie, uh, and some of it is just the standard. This is your big big action piece for an action movie. Yeah. There were a lot of explosions. I kind of miss explosions in movies. You know, they, they when there was a big explosion, I was like, uh, remember when we rewatched the original Roadhouse, and there was just like. All these huge, inexplicably huge explosions yeah. everywhere. Yeah, and I was what just caused like, that one? I don't know. Because that barn just exploded like it was like uh, like a plant. Yeah, yeah. It was it was it was it was so much fun. Uh, all right, well, that's kind of all I have to say about Fall Guys. Is there anything else you want to talk about? No, no. I'm I'm kind of curious to like watch an episode of the old show. Like I, I oh, wonder, yeah. well, I, I wonder what the tone is. You know, like I'm, I'm just sort like of curious. Wonder Woman seventies right, well, funny. I, no, I, yeah, true. Yeah. But I'm I'm just I'm just sort of curious about it now. Mm. Like because because uh, the character, the two main characters, same same names as in the as in the the movie, and yeah. like I'm, I'm just vaguely curious about it, but, but not enough to actually put in the effort to watch it. Uh, yeah, I think that's fair. 